Hey guys, my name is Rednew, and these are the top 10 tips I wish I knew before starting Pal World. I streamed the game for about 7 hours now, make sure to catch me live on Twitch or on YouTube, and there are a lot of things that I didn't know after hours of playing that not only could have saved me a lot of time, but also greatly enhanced my experience playing. I think these are things both casuals and power gamers ought to know, so whether you're looking for a good head start or to maximize your fun, this video is for you. Let's hop right into it. So we're hopping straight into tip number one, which is at the very beginning. Don't worry about the setup of your world, that is completely up to you, but there's actually a hidden choice available to the player that most people have no idea about at the very beginning of the game, and that is, which starting zone do you want to play in? And it's no surprise, in order to find this choice, you would have to click respawn at the very beginning or die. Most people, when they first die, usually do not choose other respawn points because they want to get their gear back or have already established their base. If you want to have a different experience from your friends, your peers, or your favorite streamers, pick a different respawn point at the very beginning when you have nothing to lose. All the zones are playable at a low level, they feature different biomes and different pals at different points in the game, and they can do a lot to change up the starting formula. Another scenario is if you played alone and finally want to play with your friends, you can have you and all your friends choose a respawn point other than Plateau of Beginnings to have a totally new and fresh experience. It's a great option to have when just starting out, it's also a great option to have when you're starting a new playthrough. So tip number two is for PC players specifically, and I'm a PC player myself, and this happens before you start the game. So I actually got burned by not knowing this, and that is the fact that this game does not support crossplay. So if you have friends playing on either Xbox Game Pass or on Steam, make sure you know that you cannot play with them if you all aren't on the same platform. There are pros and cons to both Game Pass and Steam. With Game Pass, you can play both Pal World and a slew of other great titles for $1 for 14 days, then $10 a month like a Netflix or Hulu subscription. And with Steam, well, there's not really a pro to Steam as of yet. Uh, the game is 10% off right now, but full retail for an early access game is $30. Personally, I think it's worth the price, but you may not know that yet. If your friends are on Steam, it's going to be a big decision factor. Game Pass games like Pal World won't stay on it forever, or maybe it will, who knows, but it'll be there for a while for sure. And Steam may have better support for modding in the future, I don't know, but it definitely supports dedicated servers. With Xbox Game Pass, you can still play multiplayer with invite codes, but there's no crossplay between it and Steam, and as of now, there's no way to transfer saves. To be honest, even if your friends are on Steam, $1 to try out the game for 14 days isn't a bad deal in my opinion. You can cancel your subscription before you're hit for the $10, but just don't get too attached to your world or your character if you plan on making the switch later. A good tip for any player is regarding tech points. In this game, your pals and character get stronger quickly if you research more items to craft and structures to build for your base. This is done with technology points, and you get a good handful of them for each time you level, and one tech point for finding fast travel landmarks. It's way too slow and tedious to progress in this game without relying on your pals, and in order to raise the level of your pal box so you can have more worker pals available, you often need to craft or build specific structures locked behind tech points. I would recommend you always keep about three tech points available until your character is about to level. This way, you can avoid getting stuck behind accidentally buying technology that your pal box doesn't care for and having to grind a level or find fast travel landmarks in order to finally raise the level of your pal box. Tip number four is useful if you like to go on expeditions more than you like to upgrade and come back to base and put things back in storage. One resource you'll come across very early on are ore geodes, which are almost entirely useless until you hit level 10, which could take anywhere between two to five hours depending on what kind of gamer you are. Ore is really heavy with a weight value of eight. Wood and stone are infinitely more useful than ore from the very beginning, and they only weigh three units each. If you don't want to have to cut your expeditions short over and over again because you keep carrying around ore which weighs a ton, 
don't bother picking up ore for the very early game. It becomes very necessary and useful once you hit 10 and above, but you should have plenty of time to farm it when you hit levels 8 and up, and if you want to go out exploring and hunting for longer periods of time, you shouldn't worry about it too much. On the flip side, you almost always want to pick up and farm Paldeum Fragments along the way. Not only are they useful and almost necessary for just about everything, including Palospheres, they are extremely light, weighing at just one unit. Some pals spook easily and run at the side of you, making them difficult to capture with just a melee weapon. Most of the pals that spook easily will turn around and fight though if you deal damage to them. So I would recommend crafting a bow early on in order to easily fight and capture them. Arrows are not fun to craft if you don't have worker pals to help you do it since you have to craft every single arrow. So. I would personally conserve my ammo as much as I can in the early game to avoid having to spend too much time crafting them and simply use them to stop and engage the skittish pals. Some pals like Lift Monk will spook easily and keep running no matter what, but so far that's the only exception I've found. Pals cannot be captured if they're dead. But a lot of times, you want your pal to deal damage and help you capture a pal you find in the wild. Since pals attack on their own, it's hard to prevent them from overkilling the wild pals. You could recall your pal right before they deal the final blow, but a better tip is to command them to stop attacking altogether. This will allow your pal to remain on the battlefield and potentially draw enemy attacks while you focus on capturing and hitting the wild pal precisely with little risk. You can command your pals with the 4 key or by clicking the right stick. Worker pals will automatically do jobs they can handle. Some of them are proficient in a lot of things, but sometimes you need them to do a very specific thing. Take Pingolet for example. He can transport things fine, but he's also one of the only pals that I have that can keep my fridge cool in order to preserve my food. I would much rather have him focus on keeping my fridge chilly over transporting random things. So. I will pick him up and throw him directly on the fridge to assign him that task exclusively. Pals will do only the task you throw them on until you throw them at something else, even if they're waiting on material. If you want them to stop waiting and go back to doing whatever they can, simply pick them up and throw them at empty space to assign them automatically. One other important tip I'll bundle with that is to consider spacing out your facilities. Some pals you capture later on can be huge, and if your facilities are too close, it may be difficult to assign them a specific job. My eighth tip is to make sure you pay attention to what's happening with your worker pals. For whatever reason, my pals often got stuck on top of the trees in the logging site. Jerry, get down from the tree! Get down from the tree, Jerry, please! This is the fifth time! Is it some- like, did I place this facility in the wrong spot? What is wrong with them? Stop sleeping in the tree! <laughs> They're unable to jump down, and so naturally, they'll starve, get mad, they can't sleep on their beds, and slowly go insane. Sometimes it's difficult to lift and throw them, so what you can do instead is take them off as a worker pal in the pal box, then reassign them to get them unstuck. Alright, so here is where we can get a little sweaty. And don't worry, it's not too hard to do. But if you really want to min-max your gathering time, then you're going to want to utilize this gathering tip right here. What you can do, instead of simply holding left click to chop your trees or mine your ores, is instead cancel the backswing animation of your gathering swings with crouch. With imperfect timing, this can cut your gathering time by about half a second, which is huge if you consider that probably the majority of your time, at least in the early to mid game, will be spent gathering. I saved the best tip for last. So if you started in Plateau Beginnings, you may notice that there are a lot of downward slopes. Well, one thing you can do with that is slide down them. In order to slide, you need to run then crouch on a downhill slope. Sliding is really cool because you get a nice kick of speed half a second or so into it, but what's cooler is that not only does jumping preserve all this momentum, but so does gliding. This is going to let you cover so much horizontal distance super quickly, and it's probably the coolest, most fun thing that I learned that I completely missed in my first 7 hours of playing Power World. So, if you have no time to smell the roses and you've got somewhere to be, make sure you slide glide all the way there. You can do this on any small slope, by the way, 
even the ramparts of a wall. And one other thing that I haven't really found a good application for, but thought I'd mention for anyone willing to look into it, is the fact that if you crouch in mid-air, you actually propel yourself forward ever so slightly. It doesn't seem like something you can spam, and it locks you into sliding as soon as you land, but it's pretty cool nonetheless, and maybe someone can, or already has, found a way to utilize it. Anyway, my name's Renu, and if you learned something new or thought I shared something cool, please remember to like and subscribe to the channel for more Power World content. Leave a comment on some tips that you have for me or any new player. Also, make sure to catch me live on my YouTube channel or Twitch channel, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.